Hello students. Today we are going to understand about a topic called as refraction of light. Why refraction? Because you have already studied about refraction of light in your lower standards. But however, today we are going to scrutinize and analyze why does this refraction of light takes place and what are the essential terms related to refraction of light. We are going to also use this in your standard 11th as well as in your standard 12th based on which you can also expect some questions in your JE or your NEET examinations. Now, before we understand refraction of light, we need to understand what exactly do we mean by light. We all would be knowing that light is nothing but a form of energy. Now, this energy is propagated in the form of electromagnetic waves. What is a wave? A wave is nothing but a oscillatory disturbance that is propagated through a medium. Now, in electromagnetic waves, it is the oscillating electric field and magnetic field, where electric field and magnetic field are mutually perpendicular to each other and this disturbance is propagated through the medium. These electromagnetic waves are found to have maximum speed in vacuum that is 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second. But as soon as these electromagnetic waves enter into a medium, especially if the medium is a transparent medium through which the electromagnetic wave can be transmitted, the speed changes. The speed varies from medium to medium. If the speed is optically denser, please remember the term. We are talking about optical density, not mass density. This is a major misconception that some of us can develop. Optically denser medium means the speed of light would be lesser. So more optically dense the medium is, lesser would be the speed of light. And among all the known material, diamond is found to be the most optically denser. That means the speed of light is minimum in diamond. And similarly, other mediums may have different optical densities resulting into different speeds. That depends upon the optical density. And again, that depends upon whether the material is transparent to light or not. Now, when a light, when a wave of light is traveling from one transparent medium to another transparent medium, it may change its direction. When I use the word, it may change its direction because it depend, depends upon whether the light is entering obliquely or normal to the surface. If light enters obliquely from one transparent medium to another transparent medium, it will change its direction. Now that depends upon whether it is traveling from a rarer medium to a denser medium or it's traveling from a denser medium to a rare medium. We have learned in our lower standards that when light travels from rarer to denser medium, it bends towards the normal. That is, angle of incidence will be more as compared to the angle of refraction. Wherein the delta represents the deviation, which we can clearly make out that delta is equal to I minus R. But whereas if the light is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium, it will be bending away from the normal. We know about this. We know the laws of refraction regards to this. But what we have not clearly understood is that why does this take place? We can explain this in two ways. One, according to the same old formulae and terms that you might have done in your lower standards, we will be using the same things to explain mathematically why does the light bend away when it is traveling from denser to rarer and towards the normal when it is traveling from rarer to denser. We have done the Snell's law. The Snell's law says that when the light is traveling from one medium to another medium, the ratio of sine of the angle of incidence to sine of the angle of refraction is always constant. And that constant is nothing but the refractive index of the second medium with respect to the refractive index of the first medium, where the light is traveling from the first to the second medium. This is according to the laws of refraction in which we have the Snell's law. Also, by the definition of refractive index we have done, that refractive index of any medium is the ratio of speed of light in vacuum to the speed of light in that medium. Based on this, I can get mu2 upon mu1, which is refractive index of second medium with respect to in comparison to refractive index of the first medium. I get that to be equal to speed of light in the first medium upon speed of light in the second medium. Now, we can use this relation 
put it over here and hence explain mathematically that why is that light when it travels from rarer to denser it bends towards the normal when it goes from denser to rarer it bends away from the normal if i just combine this formula what i come up with instead of over here mu2 upon mu1 i got that's equal to v1 upon v2 now if i use this relation this itself completes the explanation like for example we said that the light is traveling from rarer to denser we said that if it is a rarer medium okay if it is rarer that is the density is lesser then the speed will be more which means that the speed in the first medium will be more than the speed in the second medium which says that v1 will be greater than v2 if v1 is greater than v2 then the numerator is larger and the denominator is smaller indicating mathematically sin i is greater than sin r now we know the trend in sin of angles that as we move in acute angles when we move from 0 to 90 degrees the value of the sign increases so if sin i is greater than sin r it indirectly means that angle of incidence is greater than angle of refraction therefore the light bends towards the normal similarly if you go from a denser medium to a rarer medium denser means the speed will be lesser which means that in the first medium v1 will be less than v2 if v1 is less than v2 then the numerator is smaller that means sin i would be smaller and therefore angle of incidence is less than angle of refraction which means that as a ray of light is traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium, it will be bending away from the normal. This is a mathematical explanation. Same thing we can also understand diagrammatically. Like if I come over this side, let's imagine that this is a boundary which is separating a rarer medium from a denser medium. Rarer means the speed of light in the first medium is more as compared to the speed of light in the second medium. Now we need to understand though we always represent that light the propagation of light is represented in the form of rays we have to go back and understand that light is nothing but electromagnetic waves and waves is nothing but disturbance that is traveling through a medium let's say that this is a light wave which is propagated then these simply indicate the direction of propagation of light now when this wave front or simple I can call it as a wave when this wave is incident on a surface or a boundary separating two medium in very simplified way I can say that the end of the wave which is entering into the denser medium would be traveling slower as compared to the end of the wave which is still in the rarer medium the concept is that of secondary wave front but let's keep it very simple for you right now so, in very simple language, the distance traveled in the rarer medium would be more as compared to the distance traveled in the rarer medium. Now, if I simply join these ends, what do I see is that the wave front has completely changed its path. Now, the wave in the denser medium would continue to travel in this direction which clearly shows that angle of incidence is larger as compared to the angle of refraction showing us that why and how the light when it travels from travels from rarer to denser will be bending towards the normal same explanation we can extend it to the other part where when the ray of light is traveling from a denser to rarer medium why does it bend away from the normal as I said again, light propagates in the form of waves, where these only represent the direction of wave propagation. Again, the end of the wave front when it is incident on the boundary separating both the medium, the end that enters into the rarer medium, rarer, which means that the speed will be greater. This end of the wave would be traveling faster or it would be traveling more distance as compared to the end that is still in the denser medium resulting into the wave front bending away from the normal. This is a brief understanding of why does refraction of light take place. And this whole thing could be summarized in a single connected formula that is sin i upon sin r is equal to mu2 with respect to mu1 which is v1 upon v2 which we could use for the numericals as well. Further we can study later on.